Hey guys, I've got a pretty exciting one for you today. This one is about croak. Now, this head unit has a 360 degree parking system which utilizes four cameras which are included in the box. That gives you a bird's eye view of your car as you're driving or parking. That's awesome. And it also has premium features like wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. And it's only 180 pounds or $220. Let's check it out. So who is Croak? Well, they make the more budget side of Android head units, but the specifications of them still appear to be quite good. For example, this has an eight core CPU with four gigabytes of RAM, and it has wireless CarPlay, and it has wireless Android Auto, and it has the 360 system for parking if you choose that option. So there's two options that you can have. You can have it without the 360 system, which it costs about 150 pounds, which is about $180. Or you can get it with the 360 system like I have here, uh, which is 180 pounds, which is $220. So that 360 system is actually a very interesting thing, which gives you a modern car feature on your car. It gives you a bird's eye view of your vehicle as you're parking and uh, gives you, you can see all the way around your car basically. So I actually did do an install of one of those not too long ago. So it's gonna help me with the installation of this one. And because it has that parking system, I'm going to reorder the way that I do this review and we're gonna have a look at the uh, parking system before we look at everything else. Right, let's get it out of the box. And here it is, and it just looks like a generic Android head unit. It has the same design. This design is shared by the TIs, the Enon, and the Esku, and some Joyings and some other brands as well. It is a generic kind of design, and the reason why they keep this kind of design is because it will go into fascias design for specific cars to make them look factory. So that's totally fine. So we have the capacitive touch buttons on the left hand side here with a reset button here and a microphone up here. And on the other side, we have the main loom entry point here, all of the other connectors, which I'll go into in a bit, the FM antenna input here, the GPS antenna input here, a fan, which is a really good addition. So that's quite cool, literally. And then you have a HDMI port. Now I recently did show you a DSATA head unit which had a HDMI port. So few Android head units have them. They all utilize the composite video connections for rear monitors. This one actually has one on the back. I'm assuming it's a video out uh, for rear monitors. I mean, it's a possibility it could be a video in. If it was a video in, that would be absolutely amazing because you could have games consoles and things on here, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a video out, which is cool as well. That means they're taking into consideration that people don't use the old school composite video stuff anymore. So also in the box, we've got some brackets, three USB cables. We've got a loom that has eight pre-outs, eight. Uh, it's a 5.1 system, that's awesome. Um, again, very few head units have this. It means that you can have a separate center speaker, separate subwoofer. So you've got two subwoofer inputs left and right, two center speaker left and right. Then you have front left, front right, rear left, rear right, all on different pre-outs. I'll be very interesting to see how the software deals with having this kind of setup, but it does mean if you're watching movies or anything that has 3D sound, it will literally work fine. It also means potentially that you can control the power into different speakers because you can connect them separately on this one head unit. So interesting, we'll, we'll check out the software later about that. Then we have the microphone input and then we have video and audio input and a video out composite as well. This is just one composite video wire. I assume this is for the reverse camera. Then we have a GPS antenna, some screws. And because I got the 360 system, I have the 360 pack. Um, I'll, I'll show you that now. So we got a wire that goes to the rear camera, 
a, a wire with heat protection which goes to the front camera and then we have the left and right camera wires and then we have the actual four cameras themselves which have color coded uh, plugs which makes it nice and easy uh, and then we have the actual loom that goes to the head unit again color coded they have these additional wires on them and these are trigger wires so the reverse camera has a trigger wire so that we know when the car's in reverse the head unit knows when the car's in reverse so it will show you the back of the car and the left and right cameras have wires because these wires should go to the indicators so that when you turn your indicator on blinker if you're in America it will tell the head unit that you're going to be turning and it will also have the video to show you that side to give you visibility of that side uh, so yeah um, this is exactly the same as the TI's system and even the plugs are the same now these cameras do need to be fitted to wing mirrors and the front and the back of the car so they have actually supplied you with the hole saw to do that as well so you basically make a hole in the bottom of the mirror and then you put the camera into the mirror. I will show you how I did that later on. Now one thing that I see that isn't included is the calibration sheets. And the only reason I know that they're a requirement is because I it did the installation with a TI's unit a few months ago. So these calibration sheets are these massive sheets that you lay in front of the car and at the rear of the car. And then when you are looking at your head unit, you match where the corners of these calibration sheets are so they all match where they're supposed to go which gives you the proper 360 view around the car now i have those sheets because i had them from the ti's unit so i'm going to be okay but uh, i'm not sure how people would calibrate without them so that'll be an interesting thing or maybe you can buy them separately we'll see I'm not going to bore you with the total installation in this video because I've done it in a different video, but I will give you a quick montage now to show you it being fitted into the vehicle. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to photo models, hit the tick, and that will take photos of all the cameras and we can then tap them and we can calibrate them. And if we hit help, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is where we're going to place these, uh, these little markers on the edges of the squares. And this is what's going to calibrate the cameras. And as you can see at the moment, it's, it's way off. And if I start to move this around you can see that it's uh, zoomed in on this section and it just makes it very easy uh, to calibrate so we're just going to do it that way and what do i have to do save so two goes here This is the best I can do calibration wise um, and as you can see it hasn't really stitched the images together properly unfortunately but um, all of the cameras are working properly. And here it is installed in my Saab 93 convertible. The head unit that I had in this car before was a nine inch and that was perfect for what I wanted. This is a 10 inch display and as you can see it's overlapping the roof switch a little bit so that's not an ideal situation. But it'll be fine for most other cars that allow for a larger screen to be installed. Right, let's switch it on and see how long it takes to boot up. So I've switched it on now and I can hear the fan on the back of the head unit is currently sp spinning up. You can't actually hear it when the engine is running but because I don't have the engine running at the moment I can hear that fan. 
So Croak is the brand. Okay, and there we go. This is the dashboard itself. So let's talk about the screen. Um, it is 10 inches and it runs a 600p resolution. I would have preferred to have a slightly larger resolution screen, but at the end of the day, it does look fine. It doesn't look blurry at all. It looks fairly sharp, which is the main thing. And the contrast ratio is good uh, from the aspect that it's sharp and bright. The colors are fairly vivid, so it is quite nice to look at. So the dashboard's pretty useful. On on the left hand side it shows you all of the apps that you've recently used. The second one is a radio and it does actually give you RDS up here. You can see 88.8 is actually BBC Radio 2 but when you save these frequencies to the preset buttons it will show the frequency and not the RDS station unfortunately but at least you can see that you're listening to Radio 2 which is better than some other head units. This one is for the local music which is mp3s on a USB stick or locally on the head unit etc and this one over here allows you to choose six apps that you most use and you can change this just by hitting the edit button and you can remove and add apps nice and easily from there. And if you tap this icon down here it will take you to all of the rest of the apps which we'll go into in a second. On the second page we have GPS, Bluetooth phone and Speedplay. Speedplay is what connects it to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And then we have DSP which is the graphic equalizer for the audio. And video will just play any files that you have on USB or, or locally on the head unit. Right, let's just go back to apps because I want to show you a few interesting things that this head unit has. So first of all, it did come with Netflix and Spotify pre-installed. I did not install those. And it also has this app called S CPU Fan. And the CPU Fan actually shows us how hot the CPU is currently. And it has this cool little graphic which shows that the CPU Fan is currently running. And I can actually hear it right now as I'm talking to you. But if I wanted to, I could switch it off. I mean, that's probably not a good idea because it's actually quite warm at the moment, although it does show you like I've just switched it off and the CPU isn't actually necessarily rising um, so I don't know how useful that fan is but if you wanted to you could keep it on full time all the time have it automatically come on when the CPU is over 70 degrees or just have it off I just leave it on auto because it doesn't really bother me you as I say you can't hear the fan uh, when the car is is on and you know the engine is running right let's have a look at the menu so if we hit this button here you can see that it's just generic car android like they haven't done anything special it's just how you would find a generic android uh, car head unit would be all right let's talk about the features first because there's some cool stuff on this thing so if we hit 360 it will start the 360 app and this is what is using the cameras around the car now the special thing about the 360 system on this car is that it has the ability to record on the dvr uh, using the record functionality to a usb stick so that's pretty cool Okay, so let's have a look at all the cameras. So we're looking out the front with this camera. This one's uh, the rear, the reverse camera. Then we have the right-hand side. Then we have the left-hand side. And this one gives you a view of uh, different areas of the car. So that's uh, showing you what's in front of the car. This one's showing you what's behind the car. And this one's just a general overview of the car, like what's in this image. And then this last one here, uh, that's what's behind you and that's what's in front of you so you can just switch between those two so there isn't any real options to properly calibrate now it does have calibration uh, which is here and you can see here that is showing you uh, the different types of calibration sheets that you uh, you can use now a calibration sheet is quite literally a, a sheet that you place on the front and the rear of the car they're large sheets and this is what you use to calibrate it. Now this head unit did not come with a calibration sheet, so you actually can't calibrate it. Now it just so happens that I had some calibration sheets from uh, the TI's unit that I, uh, I, I calibrated, um, so I used those. The problem is, is whereas the TI's unit has a bunch of different settings which shows you the heights and the distances of, of each of the cameras, uh, this one doesn't. And as a result of that, it does not allow you to properly get a nicely mapped image. Right, so I was just trying the HDMI out on this unit. As you can see, I have the HDMI plugged in where it should be. 
and it's going to my portable monitor down here which has now gone onto standby mode because there's no signal being received but I will just show you I will switch it back on again so that's the monitor being switched on no signal the HDMI on this head unit does not work let's look at Android Auto so the way that Android Auto works is that you connect your phone via Bluetooth to this unit you see that it says connecting on the screen and there you go you get wireless Android Auto my phone is not connected at all and now it's playing my music so I just turn that off and there we go. So yes, it uh, does have wireless Android Auto and I do have access uh, to all of my apps and I can navigate and do all the good stuff that you would ex expect from Android Auto and completely wirelessly as well. So that's cool. So we'll try Apple CarPlay next. So again, I'm just gonna connect my iPhone via Bluetooth. So I've connected it via Bluetooth now and as you can see, the screen has suddenly changed and it says connecting to Stuart's iPhone up here and there we go Apple CarPlay straight away completely wirelessly and again have access to all my apps which are compatible with Apple CarPlay just on the screen here so it's perfect um, and uh, completely wirelessly as well so you have your 360 cameras plus wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto so that is awesome right let's talk about speed the processor in this is an 8 core it's called a T5H demo on here it's based on the ARM architecture A53 CPU, and it has four gigabytes of memory. So at face value, it should be fairly fast, but we're gonna do the test, and the test is Spotify first of all, and we'll wait and see how long it takes to load. It's taking a little bit of time to uh, bring things up here. Still going, there we go, okay. Um, so as you can see, it took quite a long time for Spotify to load up. Not too long, but still quite a bit of time. And now if we go to Waze, There we go, okay. So yes, um, it, uh, it works fine. It just takes a little bit of time to get there. But one thing to note is once you've loaded these apps once, you don't need to do it again. And what I mean by that is if I want to go back to Spotify, it's very simple. I can go to Spotify and it will be open instantaneously. I don't need to wait for the thing to load again. And the reason for that is because these apps are now saved to memory and it has four gigabytes of memory. So I can be playing music and navigating at the same time and I can switch between the two and it will react uh, fairly quickly. So um, that's the benefit of having the, uh, the, the higher amount of memory. You can run multiple apps at the same time. Right, let's talk about vehicle integration. Vehicle integration, generally we're looking for the ability to be able to use your steering wheel controls, the ability to set up a car logo on boot up, and the ability to change the color of the capacitive touch buttons. There actually is no options to change the color of the capacitive touch buttons, and there is no option to set up a boot logo. Now to set the steering wheel controls, that they do actually work. Look, if I uh, press the buttons on the steering wheel, you can see that it is in actual fact adjusting the volume on the head unit so all of that stuff does actually work uh, the way that you do it is you go into the settings and you go into car settings and then you go into assembly and then you go to steering wheel learning and you hit begin learning and when you push a button it will allow you to press one of these corresponding buttons and that trains it to use these functions when you actually press the steering wheel button so the steering wheel learning section of this head unit works absolutely fine right finally let's talk about the sound settings if we open up the dsp we can see that it has a 14 band graphic equalizer to control the sound and it has some presets here so you can choose something that sounds good in your car or of course uh, you can just uh, modify this to your heart's content. And these do change the sound as you would expect. So it has got a functioning DSP, which is, which is great. And this head unit does give us a little bit of additional control as well. So if we go to listening, you have fade and balance control here. 
under output you can control the center the front the rear and the sub and those are all the individual rca pre-outs that i showed you when i did the unboxing so you can control them all here and if we go to frequency we can choose between three-way two-way or 5.1 um, so it shows you how the speakers are set up here and then for each of these speakers you can control the high and the low pass including the slope so you just select one of these and you can change the frequency and you can change the uh, the slope here as well so it actually has quite advanced control over the audio and in actual fact this has probably one of the most advanced audio control that I've I've seen if many head units so all in all actually I'm pretty impressed with the sound it does actually sound pretty good right let's give it some scores As usual, I hope this video is useful for you. And if you have any questions about this specific unit, please do ask in the comments section below and I'll see what I can do about answering them for you. If there's any particular brand of head unit that you'd like me to have a look at, please let me know and I will see what I can do about reviewing it. And of course, subscribe to my channel because I do a fair amount of these head unit reviews. Until next time.